Attendees are in listen-only mode. Greetings and welcome to this joint TCMI ACIST webinar. I am Anna Baptista and I am the Chair-elect of TCMI. It is my pleasure today to introduce the joint webinar series and today's presenter and topic. The joint TCMI ACIST webinars are presented as a service to members of TCMI and ACIST and to guests. The purpose of the joint series is to advance the discourse and practices of innovative metadata. Our presenter today is Christina Harlow. Christina works on metadata operations for the Cornell University Library. Today's webinar is on the topic of metadata assessment. This webinar sets up the following question. How do we handle analysis of the rich understandings we have built into our cultural heritage institutions metadata and enable ourselves to perform this analysis with the systems and resources we have. This webinar sets up this question and proposes some guidelines, best practices, tools and workflows around the evaluation of metadata used by and for digital libraries and cultural heritage institution repositories. You will have an opportunity to ask presenters questions near the close of the webinar. There is a panel on the right of your screen to enter the text of your questions. We ask that you wait to enter your text until near the end of the webinar. I will moderate the questions and answers. We will address as many questions as our time allows. With that, I'll turn the podium over to Christina. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Um, so thank you, Anna, for that introduction. And I'm really, really excited to be here today to talk about this. Um, this is work that I'm excited to share with you guys because I've been engaged with it either through organizational or committee membership or through on the ground needs at my previous and current jobs. Um, metadata assessment in cultural heritage institutions collections is, I think it's an interesting work area. It, something that's developing quickly and I am hoping to present to all of the virtual attendees today um, a sort of snapshot of various efforts that I've encountered either through my day-to-day -day work or have encountered as part of um, some organizations looking to try to help with metadata assessment guidelines uh, and I'd love to get your feedbacks and additions and questions and updates and keep this conversation going in some way so Thank you for having me here. Let me make sure I get the slides clicking. There we go. Before we dive into all of the metadata assessment goodness, um, this is a bit.ly link that, that will take you to my slides or my slide deck. I do have speaker notes in my slide deck that I will try to follow. So if the internet dips out or um, I speak a little bit too quickly or uh, I just have a really weird accent so you can you know, understand what I was saying, um, you can check the speaker's notes. I won't follow them to a T, but I'm going to try to use them as best I can for clarity of all participants. Um, those slides are also open for comments, um, and there are a lot of links and resources and examples uh, embedded in the slides. So feel free to leave a comment with a question. Feel free to leave, like, a, I also use this tool. Wouldn't that be great to add? Um, grab the links from it and share these slides out however you wish. So make sure people get that. It's bit.ly jello to a wall camel case. All right. The requisite five seconds has passed, so I hope you've gotten it. You'll also see that this, the bit.ly links at the bottom of all the slides going forward in case you want to grab it later. OK, so about me, that's me uh, laughing in front of the Library of Congress. I don't remember why I was laughing, but um, I am Christina Harlow. I was a metadata librarian at Cornell University Library in beautiful upstate New York. Was until about a week ago <laughs> when I moved cross country and am now starting in my first week of being a data operations repository specialist in the Stanford University Libraries. Um, I'm happy to chat with folks about what I consider to be data operations, although that's out of the scope of this webinar. 
uh, or any other topic raised today, you, can, you should feel free to email me at that email address there. Um, you can ping me on Twitter. I'm pretty active on Twitter at cm underscore Harlow. Uh, and I'd say in my previous and in my current job, um, even though I've just started, but I often work on trying to make metadata exchange and conversion, updates, management, display, um, more efficient, transparent, and sustainable. I'm really thinking about data ecosystem type questions. Um, and this means that my metadata, like a metadata assessment is a work area I've spent a fair amount of time hacking around on, not as a programmer with an application, not as an ontologist or a theorist with a proposed model to handle all assessment outcomes, but as someone who's more in the operations side of metadata work. I, I want to get production and emerging development and data flows up and running. Um, with what tools I have and what resources we have to throw at those questions. Okay, so with that context given and a little bit of information about where I'm coming from with this, um, I'm hoping to expand on the following topics in today's webinar. Uh, first, I want to try to, or I want to present on why we perform metadata assessment. What, what is the use cases or guiding um, principles that lead us to it? Uh, this will help ground us in an understanding of which approach we might choose to do what kind of metadata assessment, because it is a, a wide and varied field. Secondly, I'd like to go through some of, of the proposed metrics or units of measurement for metadata review analysis and headed towards a definition of quote unquote quality. So I'm making air quotes there. Um, this, these metrics, they bring with it the need to understand both your working context to see if those metrics are applicable or even reliable. Um, this is an area, like quality itself is a concept that is really hard to untangle, especially in the realm of metadata, um, because you know one librarian's granular model could be another developer's junk metadata. There's so many different perceptions and needs and use cases and contexts for our metadata. Um, the, the definition of quality can shift, even just across schemas, how you measure it, what it counts as, what you do with it. So I, in this presentation, I don't focus on any particular schema or namespace or data model or, or other, um, but I try to instead focus on metadata assessment at a higher level, uh, and metrics that I think you could use or, or not uh, in a number of contexts, and hopefully that will support you developing your own approach for determining quality and assessing metadata in your particular domain and situation. I try not to make this specific to a particular profile or metadata space or application. Um, the third topic I want to cover is I want to go through some general guidelines for performing metadata assessment, mostly derived from my own practice and influenced by some readings and, and sort of seminal works in the field. Um, as well as working groups I'm in that work on this topic. Um, I want to make sure to include that bridge between the theory and ideas, the analysis of, of the metrics in area two, and then what you need to do on the ground to get started with assessment and being able to start interpreting those um, responses or, or those analyses, and that would be area three. Um, fourth area I hope to cover today, it's sort of in that same pragmatic vein. I want to give you some examples of analysis workflow tools, workflows and tools, or workflow tools, that I've used a little bit, um, and with a little bit more context, you can see how I've incorporated some of these recommendations immediately into my work, and then you can possibly take it and immediately incorporate it into your work. Um, examples are littered throughout this presentation, because I'm I tend to learn by doing. Um, so please do like use the URLs to see the examples further that I'm talking about. Um, we'll go into a little bit more detail of them uh, depending on time in area four. And always feel free to leave comments or questions on slides if there's any documentation of my own work that you would like to see. And finally, I'm hoping to end with some organizations and possible areas for engagement that I would love to recommend that you watch or take part in even if you're really interested in this question of, of metadata assessment. Um, so hopefully this is all gonna take us about 45 minutes at this point and we'll have time for questions at the end. Um, again, do feel free to use the slides or create comments um, or email me or find me on Twitter if you don't get a chance to get your question in or you want to follow up on anything. 
All right, so area one, use cases for metadata assessment. Why do we perform metadata assessment? What, what's the originating goal that pushes us to it and what kind of context is that set up? Um, I would say uh, it, our context, our, our, our motivations for, for metadata assessments varies, but a particular soapbox um, that I like to stand on or a particularly strong opinion that I have that I'll repeat quite often is that uh, so many library folks I've worked with, especially in metadata and cataloging, like to use the discovery interface, the OPAC or your blacklight layer, something like that. Um, th they like to use that layer intended for end users or patrons as a metadata assessment tool, create a record and go see what it looks like in the OPAC. Um, op update an exhibition metadata and some Omeka description, then go see what Omeka looks like. This is helpful for quick checks um, and for gauging how much the data work you're doing is going to uh, more direct end user goals and applicability. But it doesn't give you necessarily the accurate representation of the metadata you're directly working with. Um, think of, you know, there's so many indexing processes involved in making discovery layer. Um, not all of them are necessarily transparent or documented or documented where you would be watching them. Uh, and interfaces like this don't necessarily support the kind of querying that we really want to build out so that we can have better understanding of what, are, what the state of our metadata is. Um, so I, I really want to push on the fact that we need to move beyond thinking of just discovery interfaces or user-facing tools is what we also use for our assessment. Um, this may be obvious to a large number of folks already on the call. Uh, but it is a point I like to start uh, from because in my own work evolution, I, I've really seen that metadata assessment approaches beyond that um, are often not tried because people just look, in, look at the OPAC. And it, it starts to sway internal mapping migrations or data profiles or data understandings. So what are some of these motivations for performing metadata assessment that cause us to uh, want to look at something beyond perhaps a single record review or perhaps going beyond a CSV read-through or looking in an OPAC, OPAC and doing a record display check. Um, these are some areas that I have interacted with that I could think of. Um, I know that these, this is not a complete list. Uh, I know these don't exist in a vacuum. Some of these will overlap, but hopefully these are areas that um, are relevant to some of you as well. Uh, just going in alphabetical order through the various areas I can think of and trying to unpack a little bit what kind of assessment it leads us to. Um, metadata assessment can sometimes help us surface needs for emerging or new, even if it's just new to us, resources and related metadata that we're meant to manage. So an example here is that um, at my previous job, we started to better uh, process, profile, validate, and leverage our audio, audio visual materials embedded metadata. Um, because we had a bunch of AV grants that flooded our digitization pipelines and we hadn't spent a lot of time before that trying to standardize or work with the embedded metadata that our, preser our digit digitization tools automatically created. So we performed metadata assessment on that to try to figure out a better profile and to figure out what embedded, embedded metadata already was produced by the tools and merge the two, like have an ideal, see what actually exists, figure out a pathway forward to make that better, and how we could start leveraging embedded metadata. So sometimes just throwing a new object into your data pipelines is like a, a reason for wanting to assess what metadata gets captured how, and then do, you know, model updates. Um, another possible area for wanting to perform metadata assessment is assessing how enhanced metadata might correlate to increased record views, um, this is a sort of area of research I've heard a lot of interest in, but I've seen, um, personally, I've not seen terrible amount of output on, uh, but along the ideas of can we assess what metadata has been enhanced and then relate that in some way to the analytics in our website that say, doing this subject analysis gets this many more views in our public display. A core motivating set though, so moving from that, a core motivating set of use cases for performing metadata assessment is because you're about to migrate. Like we're always migrating, we always think it's not going to be, it's going to be the last migration and it never is. Um, and when you go to migrations for your metadata or you're trying to share your data um, into maybe some service like an aggregator 
like Digital Public Library of America. Um, that brings up metadata assessment right away. You want to do metadata assessment um, to check that your expectations of the state of the metadata uh, in the space that is about to be migrated away from, um, that the metadata is in the state that you expect it. Because so often, in my experience, it's not. <laughs> you think it's one thing, and you go and do some assessment, and you see it's actually um, not as clean or not in, in this model entirely. Um, so for migrations, the example given here, uh, I did some assessment that led to a improved mapping. Um, this is just using RDF mapping language for assessment uh, or for the, the transformation. Um, that mapping file was generated from my performing assessment to see what fields already existed in an originating database that we're migrating away from. Um, getting some sense of what values appeared so I could uh, transform uh, an entirely local schema. Uh, and then actually I used this mapping um, file also to generate a, an assessment um, check file after the mapping, after the conversion is complete. Um, so a lot of the metadata assessment scripting tools I've ever used have come from this area of migration and data sharing work. Another core area of work that motivates metadata assessment, um, though it's maybe not as prevalent as it should be in my opinion, is to generate metadata application profiles or implementation profiles, um, whether it be for a repository or an aggregated service or a data pipeline or something else. Um, the generation of these profiles uh, makes it clear for internal and external users, machine and humans, um, sometimes machine and humans, although often this is just human readable documentation. It makes clear uh, what expectations we have of the data and metadata, what gets captured, what is described, how is it described, and what should be expected. And these are all important questions for assessment work of instance data. Um, you want to be able to check that your profile is correct. Um, this example on this slide shows the output of some simple Python scripts that I've hacked together uh, to perform assessment for field frequency. So you can see these are XPath patterns or XPath um, paths that uh, appeared in an old XML database we were migrating, and I wanted to see how many fields appeared, how many times within a certain um, subset of description. Um, so yeah, so metadata application profile generation is something that you want to use metadata assessment for, because you don't want to just create a model and not check that what the data is actually looking like. We'll go into the idea of profiles and documentation more in a little bit, but um, I think this is key in connecting what we expect upon data creation, what we hope when performing metadata enhancements, and what we publish when piping metadata out to various indexing or publishing pipelines. This is like the connection and assessment's key to that. Closely aligned with application profile generation is also the selection of standards or specifications, formats, and codings for metadata leading to some sort of preliminary analysis. Um, especially as we start to see, or we see our metadata standards options um, continuing to grow, they continue to expand, uh, especially if you're looking in linked open data, um, linked open data systems in which you can select fields and classes from multiple namespaces and domains. Um, it means that you need to do more metadata analysis to figure out what standards are in play, if you're using those fields correctly, uh, and how you can maybe stage enhancements for either your um, ontology or your instance data. Um, so this example is the same group of hacky Python scripts that I wrote to check date formats. Actually, that was just to try to get a better date encoding in place to figure out what would fit best with what data existed. So something we can all understand is that given um, that we have lots and lots of data and metadata projects. There's always more metadata to clean up or create. And we have increasingly limited staff time and expertise and availability. So metadata assessment can then emerge as a way to find out what metadata projects you can take on that intersect at the ability to clean up, um, that's something you can clean up now rather, re relatively easily, but have the most impact on you know, whatever your end goal is for that metadata. Um, so you want to hit that intersection, and assessment can help that. An example of this being, uh, when I was working for a Digital Public Library of America service hub, we were aggregating lots of digital collections metadata from around the state of Tennessee. 
And we wanted to do geographic enhancement of the subject, you know, geographic subject headings. Um, we didn't have the staff to enhance everything. So we would run assessment to see what feel, or what geographic subject headings appeared the most, um, like uh, frequency count. And then we would um, only do geocoding and URI additions for that top subset because we knew that would have the most impact. And the idea was is that as the data set grew over time and you continued to perform enhancements and normalizations and other work, you could then continue to expand um, the you know, addition of geocoding and URIs. So this is you know, an example of where you can use metadata assessment uh, to try to target your, your resources where you can have, they can have the most impact. Um, and it just uses OpenRefine, which is uh, a relatively well-known and simple-ish, <laughs> not, not always. It's a relatively well-known data tool in library space. Finally, we can look to metadata assessment to support our validation and expectation of metadata values, i.e. this field should be a string or that field should be an encoded date. There should always be this field at least once. By checking what the state of our metadata is, then iteratively improving our validation mechanisms to be more granular. Um, so on the flip side, metadata assessment gives us the ability to then debug validation errors and track back patterns of errors or misunderstandings in our metadata. Um, an example of this being uh, when we perform an assessment of our metadata describing uh, preservation store objects. Um, this led to an improved JSON validation document, uh, performing assessment, what fields appear, what the structural metadata looked like for that uh, particular case. Um, I could see that we wanted to do a more granular validation than we were. We had been using the stock OAI DC XML uh, or XSD validation, which basically says, are there elements underneath OAI element? Um, we wanted to have a little bit more control. As I did assessment, I'd figure out what the model sh should be, I'd update the model, and then I'd update the validation. And what you see on the screen is an example of that JSON validation file derived from that process. So this is all of particular interest to me because I feel like metadata assessment is how, um, is one way to have a new look at our various systems and in their interactions, this whole data ecosystem idea. By performing an assessment on what metadata existed in various stores across my previous job, uh, for example, and the stores are sort of indicated with the diagram on the screen, um, this led me to have a better understanding of what metadata should be the metadata of record, so to speak, what metadata represented which classes of objects, how I could then start doing some merging and linking, um, what interactions, data flows, and mappings could be improved across this whole ecosystem, and this was just started with metadata assessment using some very simple scripting tools. Um, I, I feel like it's a key part of our evaluation and development of our data systems architecture um, in libraries, particularly as we spin up more and more applications for our digital collections, for preservation stores, for our archival materials, for our catalog, etc. Um, there are other reasons or work areas or domains that lead to metadata assessment. Certainly, I'm really interested in seeing the emerging use case of metadata assessment techniques to figure out what counts as quality, which we'll talk about next. Um, I'm interested to see how metadata assessment techniques could start to surface new methods of resource discovery um, or just serve as a research area for information in library studies. Um, the example on this slide is taken from a highly recommended article by Corey Harper a data scientist and former metadata librarian who's, who's basically at the forefront of metadata assessment, metadata assessment research in our domain. And there's a link to his CodeFlib article in the speaker's notes, and I'd highly recommend you check it out. All right, so this leads me to my second soapbox moment or big point. Metadata assessment isn't necessarily about diving immediately into the tools and the data nitty gritty, but first setting out what your context is and your analysis scope will be. This leads to avoiding frustration and the increased likelihood that you'll obtain, or increasing the likelihood that you'll obtain meaningful and better confident results, results you can trust because you know what, what the question was. Um, otherwise, uh, you end up encountering the issue that the title of my talk is meant to evoke. If you're not a US English, um, native US English speaker 
or honestly, even if you are, you probably haven't heard the phrase nailing jello to a wall or also said nailing jello to a tree. It's an idiom meant to capture how a problem can be difficult because you can't pin down the details or parameters uh, because they keep moving and squishing like a jello. And trying to pin it down, it just, it just keeps pushing out of the way or splitting or whatever. With metadata assessment, if you jump in without first considering your motivations and scope of your questions and of your data sets, I feel like you're going to quickly find yourself working with this partially liquid, partially solid, mostly unstable uh, jello aspect. Having set out some motivations for why you would perform metadata assessment, um, the questions it may or may not answer or the purposes it would serve, let's move on to some proposed metrics for metadata assessment. This leads us further into a discussion of metadata context and how one defines quote unquote quality, um, and then how you would begin to measure your data set against that quote unquote definition of quality. And I'm not trying to underscore quality as not existing. I'm trying to emphasize the point that quality changes according to what you're looking at and where you're, lo where you're looking from. So the metrics and points I will review come from a wide range of articles and you know, my own limited experience. But I do want to highlight a few particular articles that I find really helpful in this space. Uh, everything that's in blue is a link to an open access copy of the work. Unfortunately, the last article is not available online, but hey, you can get it from interlibrary loan. Uh, in particular, Bruce and Hillman, so Thomas Bruce and Diane Hillman, uh, their 2004 article is like one of the original and more, more pervasive frameworks for metadata assessment in our domain. Um, they line up seven metrics that we'll see for metadata quality. Uh, they wrote a follow-up to this in 2013 that expands it with a couple new metrics um, influenced by the rise of linked open data discussions. I'd highly recommend also checking out the Europeana Technology Group and their Metadata Quality Task Force. They've written a fantastic review of the metadata quality and metadata assessment guidelines for their particular service. It's an excellent, excellent work. Um, and we'll see some other examples from their output later on. The, the last two resources are really great for just seeing comparison of various frameworks and metrics that exist, because um, there are a lot of metadata assessment and quality frameworks. Uh, and the last title I particularly uh, have enjoyed reading, because it doesn't focus necessarily on cultural heritage institution metadata, but linked open data and frameworks for quality within that space. So I'd be remiss if I also didn't list some of the work that has in influenced my approaches to testing these metrics and frameworks. Um, I'd strongly recommend checking out the work of Corey Harper, of Patrick Hoxtenbach, of Peter Corrali, and of Mark Phillips. Um, links are all there to their work. Uh, and they have a wide range of approaches represented on this slide to, um, to performing metadata assessment across the board. So building off that existing work, we have a range of proposed metrics. This list is not complete, nor are they necessarily the best terms to use for the concepts meant. Many frameworks diverge in their terminology. Um, one might say accuracy. One might have semantic correctness. They all have a variety of ways they could be checked as well. Some of them actually you can't check without a human looking at it. But the, this is part of defining the metrics for looking at metadata in some way. So let's take a look at, at these. Um, accessibility is an interesting one that I appreciated seeing in the Europeana report, given that Europeana, which is an aggregator of digital collections data in Europe, um, has a strong multilingual aspect to their collections. They want to make sure that many, uh, many of the people speaking different languages in Europe can access and see, find, discover resources in Europeana. Um, so accessibility could be about, are, are there multiple access paths via the metadata? Um, are, are there access points in multiple languages? Um, it could also be if a resource has been updated to conform with a particular accessibility standard, is that clearly indicated in the metadata? Um, are you using shared understanding of concepts? And that's less here about schema reuse. That's not saying, are you using DC title and I'm also using DC title? This is more about, are we using a shared understanding of concepts because we can recognize our own cultural bias in our understanding or approach to this, this abstraction of this resource? 
um, you, thinking about sharing your med, your resources and metadata across continents, across cultures, across um, all kinds of uh, boundaries or not, uh, and the concepts underlying your metadata might not always be the most easily translated across those cultures. So accessibility is along those lines. Accuracy uh, is a metric that I think we all understand, but also see the difficulty in trying to apply um, anything except for manual review to assess and clean up accuracy. Uh, it's, is, uh, you know, is your field correct? Is the field used correctly? And is the value correct? Um, we're getting better at algorithms and methods for computers to see if a field's value is most likely incorrect for a given resource, and then you would pull it out and have a human review it because it fits a certain um, ranking of this is probably not the right title. Uh, but that uh, you know, it still re requires human review at some point, um, depending on your comfort level with the confidence of you know, automated assessment results. Something that may not be as obvious um, to folks wanting to perform metadata assessment is the metric of availability. Um, and this is really meant to be technical availability. And this is something that came from outside of the, like, the Bruce, uh, uh, Bruce Hillman like, core metrics. Um, this is a key assessment metric for open data or open metadata. So can someone query your published data? Can they access a data dump? Are the metadata files, um, are, are the content types for those files correct for machine processing? Uh, it, it really is a way to assess the feasibility of reusing or accessing or extending um, your metadata or other people's metadata. Completeness is a core metric in metadata assessment that we see in some form in nearly all of the frameworks. Um, are the required fields present? Is the data captured in a field complete? Um, again, that last bit can be a bit tricky to analyze uh, by a machine. Um, I recently had an issue where we were capturing a field correctly in the workflow, but the database of record was cutting off a particular field um, five characters towards the end. Uh, but we were just checking that the value, like that the, the field was not empty, not that it was still had all of the characters. We had to shift that once we figured that out. Uh, but completeness could be both, do you have the required fields and does the field have the complete data in it? Conciseness is, uh, I find it a bit funny as a metric, as someone who's obviously not very concise, but um, it's so clearly in the eye of the beholder what conciseness means. Ultimately, it's intended to point to the conciseness in your your meta vocabulary, so your ontology or your schema or whatever vocabulary you're using. Um, assessing your metadata to make sure that you're not using multiple fields that represent the same concepts is a, an example of this. This is a case uh, where metadata assessment is not about deep diving into the details of your instance data, of your actual collections data, but also checking the application and usage of your ontology or your schema or your meta vocabulary. There's also a need for metadata to conform to, ex uh, to expectations, which hopefully you've outlined in your profile. This often ends up being defined in the type of documentation referenced earlier. Assessment of the value of a date field, for example, you want to see that it's encoded as a, a date type, or that non-repeatable fields do only appear once, if at all. Those are examples of conformance to expectations. And this is where you could really tie it into a lot of the validation work. Consistency and coherence is an assessment point that overlaps with some of what we've already brought up, but I really like the consistency and predictability guidelines from Gretchen um, Guggins. Uh, she works at the Digital Public Library of America, and she wrote up a metadata quality presentation. There's a link in the, the speaker's notes. And this is a slide that yes, no is her uh, slide to help determine consistency and coherence. Um, so are we applying our schemas or our models or ontologies in a way that a machine can process it because the expectations are followed? Do we know that a particular field is only used in a certain way? For example, you know, DC source is a, an ex example of a field that gets used in every, all kinds of ways. Um, it helps avoid uh, using fields to hold, or it recommends avoiding using fields to hold uh, multiple concatenated values if possible because then you're relying on whatever processing or data flow to split up those values once it pulls it out. Uh, so that can be sometimes difficult for parsing and for shared understanding. Um, yeah, so consistency and coherence, it's a good slide. The presentation she pulled together is quite good as well. I'd recommend it. 
Um, going to something more specific, but not necessarily limited to linked data. The metric of interlinking of data can help assess metadata's position in a sort of global knowledge graph or a network of understanding. So this is like, do you have links for your access points or for your references to external or other data sets? Um, are you keeping them up to date? That kind of uh, work. You could also assess for the interoperability of your metadata, which goes um, to are you reusing shared or community supported schemas and ontologies, which will thereby increase the shared understanding of your metadata. This is another metric that especially applies, but is not limited to linked open data. Um, assessing how licensing is managed is something libraries like to tell their patrons to do, but not necessarily to check themselves. Um, we have a lot of uh, data services now in li and um, academic libraries especially that bring up licensing. Um, but we got to make sure, uh, is your metadata licensed? Does it have a license that's clearly attached? Does your metadata indicate clearly the license of the resource or binary that it represents? It's uh, another metric that's important. This metric is a, a little bit meta, <laughs> but it's intended to capture if normalization or enhancement has occurred on a metadata set. So have you done work on this after like whatever was the originating source for the data? Um, this allows you to assess the assessment and assess the enhancement. Um, something probably not appearing in a lot of our use cases right now, but there is a metric of metadata performance. And this is really about how easy or performant it is for you to retrieve metadata from a service or a server or an API or an interface or something else. Can you make large amounts of requests to get metadata needed? Um, how scalable is that publication mechanism? Um, this again doesn't necessarily touch on the state of the instance data, but digging into the details. But it's more, more about the administration of metadata, which also requires assessment. Provenance is another sort of meta metric. Um, does your metadata have provenance of source? Does it have changes? Is it versioned? Can you assess that to determine the right reliability of your data set? Um, this is something I've spent a lot of time thinking about how we can better handle versions of, of metadata, uh, particularly as we start to increase how um, many automated enhancements we do. And then finally, timeliness is a funny one because it's meant to cover is the metadata captured um, timely for the resource it describes. So does it still connect to the, the resource has been updated, has the metadata been updated? These metrics, and I know that there are more, and I encourage you to comment with those you think of in the speaker's notes or, or give feedback, lead me to two big points before moving on to guidelines for, for performing assessment. One is the expansion of linking our data sets, whether through linked data usage or just simply more shared data sets with more references, could be either. But the expansion of our, of our linked data sets means when we're performing assessment, we need to think um, really clearly about what the limits of our description um, are. So the description, it could be a record, could be a named graph, could be something else. Do you want to assess metadata for a collection, for objects in a collection, for agents mentioned as a secondary class resource in a repository? So agents would be like people or organizations. Do you want to traverse links offered in some field values to check the in label or a secondary value? So if I have a mark record and it has a subfield zero, the subfield zero has a URI. So I also want to go and assess what data I get back from that URI. Often what your descriptive scope is for assessment is determined by what you want to accomplish. And thinking about this a bit first before diving in helps in selecting and applying the appropriate metrics towards analysis of some idea of quality. A second main point in this section is that metadata assessment isn't limited to questions like, is there a title field that returns a value type of string? It also includes or can include administrative assessment around the metadata management practices. Is your metadata accessible? Is your metadata licensed? Is it published adequately? So with that overview of those metrics, let's discuss a bit how you would go about applying them. Again, I really, really want to emphasize the first thing that I do and that you would want to do is to define your context for assessment. Um, an example here, this is my data model for resources in a particular particular collection that were being migrated to Fedora 4, uh, a digital repository. 
And in order to perform assessment of the stuff that got migrated over, so I assessed what we were about to move over. I uh, did field frequency analysis to see what fields appeared, and I did some um, field value analysis to make sure that a title was a title of a book instead of a title of a page or whatever. Um, I wanted to also assess post-migration once it was in the new repository that it, the structure, more, most importantly, the structure was what I was hoping, what I was planning, what we were modeling. Um, but to do that, I had to, you know, really have a clear idea of what that structure was and what it was I was testing, which were, for this particular example, um, journals or pamphlets. Um, so often this is defined via the use of metadata application profiles, which I am using very broadly here, um, or just documentation, sometimes machine actionable, sometimes not, that indicates the availability, uh, the available classes and properties as well as field expectations. Is the field required? Is it repeatable? Are there expected values? And the other information linking the standards or um, models that you want to use to your particular app application's implementation. Um, on the screen are some questions that I think make for a good metadata application profile that you could then perform an assessment of your metadata to see that it applies. Um, and then at the bottom, it, there is a link to a generic application profile starter template, if that's helpful at all. Um, this is sort of a side note, but I think it's a really important one for you, you assess until you start to get an idea of what it is you're assessing. And I think application profiles answer that question. So this example here shows the descriptive metadata profile for a particular digital repository object. It's, it's actually one of the classes in that Fedora 4 um, diagram sample that we saw two slides ago. This is where I write down what the metadata should look like. I define the expectations, and then I go and assess. And I, I use that um, for this particular uh, metadata repository. I use it using a series of Sparkle queries to get the val values back of fields and make sure what is appearing the way I think it is. This leads to another core point. You need to build out your data documentation along with your assessment tools for the output of analysis to be meaningful. This also encourages um, the good practice of keeping your data quality higher because you have a better understanding of both the state and the process, the model, and the actual implementation. Some other documentation that you should look into if applicable to your context for metadata assessment influence or outputs are things like machine actionable mappings. Um, this, for example, shows a Katmandu, uh, which is a tool that's a series of Perl modules for data manipulation. There's a Katmandu fix file on the left, which defines a mark to CSV mapping. And then an RML, or RDF mapping language mapping on the right. Both of these were influenced by my doing a first pass of metadata assessment on the originating data. And then furthermore, the Katmandu fix file is then used to generate a CSV for a particular subset of mark records that need further assessment by a human. So assessment tools can be used both to do that first pass of what is here, and then that second pass of here's something we need to focus in on. Metadata assessments also quite out, uh, closely tied up with validation profiles or validation ex expectations where you can test or assess the date, uh, state of data according to a more complete and machine actionable or encoded set of expectations. Um, on, the here, uh, on the left here is my JSON validation profile for metadata for objects in the preservation store, the same example we saw a little bit earlier. On the right is a snippet from a link data for production, our LD4P project. Um, there's a link for more information about that project in the notes. But it uses a unit testing language in Ruby to assess metadata converter outputs to make sure that the bit frame that's being created there is, is correct. Uh, correct according to our bit frame implementation profile. So all of this assessment documentation and tooling around it can lead you to outputs that then set up semi-automated or targeted human review. This gets to this question of we can't, you know, correct everything. We can't sit and go through every single record and update it. So assessment can help you figure out, okay, what, what can I pull together that is a group or a pattern of error that a human could sit down and power through and would have the most impact. Um, so you see here that this is where I generated a bunch of um, I got a bunch of OIPMH identifiers for records for which they were missing a creation date, and we wanted to give that to someone who could review and figure out why, why the creation date was missing. 
and that's just using um, Python scripts. This leads to an important point, one, another important point pink slide. Um, metadata assessment is not always or even often coupled directly to the data store of your metadata. So many a times, uh, many times the workflow and tools I use to generate or derive data from the metadata to then run reports on. So I'm not always just running reports on the Oracle database underneath my ILS instance or the Fedora 4 instance um, underneath my Hydra application or my NoSQL database under DSpace or wh whatever it may be. Often I am forking that a state of that metadata and running the analysis elsewhere. Um, this sometimes can make it more efficient because I can just target the metadata I want to perform assessment on, especially if it's a really large set of data. Um, sometimes it just uh, keeps the strain of running these additional queries on that um, database if it's serving, if it's also serving production needs. So we've seen examples embedded all along so far, um, and I'm running a little bit short on time, so I'm going to just go through these rel uh, relatively quickly. And I was aware that I'd probably be out of time at this point, so I'm not out, but I'm getting there. Uh, so some tools or ways you might approach it. Uh, one point I want to make is often you can perform assessment using the tools you've already got. Mark Edit has some really great reporting features in it. And if you feel like digging into the code, if you feel comfortable digging into the code base a little bit, you can start configuring your own Mark validation schema and running those in Mark Edit. So the example there was um, validating Mark um, specifically for an eBooks profile. And so we set up the validation profile and a cataloger could run the assessment in Mark Edit. Another tool we've often seen around is OpenRefine. You can use OpenRefine to assess metadata via facets and filters, which is a really helpful um, graphical user interface method or application. This shows how we generated the facets and sorted by value counts to create those subsets of geographic names that we were going to target in an earlier example for updates, all in, all in OpenRefine. Um, there are a number of Python scripts that I've mentioned a couple of times that can be really helpful for metadata or just general data analysis, but I cannot highlight enough the work of Mark Phillips on Python metadata breakers, and there are links in the slide notes. Um, these metadata breakers are often just a simple quote-unquote duct tape script is what I call, like, a duct, by which I mean duct tape scripts are, I just need to add some sort of really limited, very specific functionality that I can't get in my existing systems or applications or tools. So here I just wanted to assess field frequency and play frequency and be able to offer up that analysis to some simple bash. Um, that's it helps me know what fields appear, how often, what values look like, and then I can start to assess questions of completeness or accuracy or conciseness. There's a similar functionality to the Python metadata breakers in Kathmandu, that suite of Perl modules I mentioned before. Um, I don't use it as much because I'm not a huge Perl person, but the Kathmandu community is really great, and there's a link to a blog post about performing this sort of assessment if you're interested in that. Um, you can also use selective string or technologies like XPath or ObjectPath or LVPath to get at field and value reports that support metadata analysis. This example shows the core structure of a Sparkle query that I would use to generate metadata field reports um, for ob selected object class in my Fedora for instance. Um, so this allows me to assess metadata fields present in a scoped section of my linked data graph. Here specifically, show me all the fields that appear for resources that are of type book. This is the next, step, um, the next step of this work that I'm currently developing and testing, and if anyone's interested in collaborating on this, that'd be fantastic, is trying to use a validation library, um, Shapes Expression, which is validation for RDF, and merge these simple Sparkle queries that I have now into something more um, complex using Shapes Expression to validate my PCM or my, my uh, RDF date metadata in places like Fedora 4 or the BIP frame output as another example. Finally, there are fantastic and more involved metadata assessment dashboards that leverage big data technologies because the data is so large that you want to assess. Um, these big data technologies are like Hadoop or Spark or indexing interfaces like Lucene or Solar. 
and they generate a completely new user discovery interface just for metadata assessment reports. Um, and this screenshot is from the amazing work by Peter Corrali on the Europeana Metadata Quality Assurance Dashboard. Um, and this processes all of the Europeana Digital Collections metadata for selected types and gives you these nice graphical um, reports back on field values and percentages and how they're present according to the Europeana data model. So if this work is of interest to you, and if you're still on this call, then you probably are interested. Um, I would love for you to be able to share your own expertise or ideas or experiences or requested use cases. I need to do this assessment, but I don't have a tool. I want to do this other assessment. I, I don't know how to begin approaching it. Um, and there are a couple of groups I want to mention to you where it'd be great for you to engage with these questions or, or any contributions that you have. Firstly, a lot of the work that I've mentioned today has been shaped by the Digital Library Federation Assessment Interest Group Metadata Working Group, which is a long name. <laughs> but basically, we're a group of people dedicated to pulling together resources and recommendations for performing metadata assessment. We're an entirely open group. You do not need to be a member of anything. You don't have to be a DLF member. You don't have to be an assessment interest group member. You don't have to work at a library. Um, Anyone can join a call or look at our documentation or check out our website. Um, the two links up there, one is our main website, which has a list of all resources that we could find last year on metadata assessment, including a list of other organizations that we've seen work on this topic. And then the Zotero list is a list of specific publications on metadata quality, and it's, it's quite good. Additionally, I would again recommend keeping tabs on the Europeana um, Task Force on Metadata Quality. They're really generating some great um, outputs. Uh, they've got the reports. They've got that wonderful metadata assessment dashboard that's being worked on. Really, really cool stuff. It's, again, specific to the Europeana data model, but really interesting work coming out of there. In the United States, there's also the Digital Public Library of America Metadata Quality Assessment Working Group. Um, and they were producing guidelines for contributors to DPLA. Um, these guidelines, I think they're still being cleaned up for publication. Uh, I don't think they've been made public yet. But you can, in the meantime, check out the metadata analysis workshop that was recently given by DPLA um, staff to DPLA partners. And this workshop, in part, derived some of its recommendations and guidelines from that metadata quality assessment working group. So the top link, the bit.ly, will take you directly to the slides that our presentation of some of the metadata overview and the GitHub link at the bottom is the full set of the workshop materials, which also includes um, some workshop materials I drew up for using those Python scripts I referenced earlier to do some metadata assessment. And that's, I mean, those documents are specific to the DPLA metadata profile, but the tools could be used in, in a much broader sense. And so a point here to make is that we really want you to be involved in these efforts. Metadata assessment is something we all have a small piece of. We have a part over here that we want to do. We have a part over there. We have our own definition of quality here. But if we can get more uh, collaboration, we'd love to have your input. And, and we'd love to figure out how we can improve or increase or uh, add to or shape up better the, these um, guidelines and recommendations for metadata assessment in our domain. Um, and this is just where I'd like to acknowledge some of the folks that have influenced the work I've presented here. So none of this is my work alone, but part of the understandings and experiences and development that occurred as part of a larger working community. Um, I, I really want to say thank you to the other members of the DLF AIG Metadata Working Group and the folks at Europeana and all of the developers whose work I've built off of and everyone who's ever sat through one of the five million workshops I've done on metadata assessment tools um, because you've helped me get my understanding in my tooling iteratively better. And so that's, that's it. That's what I've got. And I, I, if we've got time, I'd love to take some questions. Um, and thank you again for having me here today. This, I hope this was helpful. Thank you, Christina. Uh, thank you for this wonderful webinar. And, um, and the, thank you as a non-native English speaker. Thank you for the explanation about daily. <laughs> it was <Yeah>. really 
I, I realized after I used it that I was like, oh yeah, idiom. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I, I, have, I have to tell you something. Uh, I was taking down some uh, uh, questions to ask you, but as, mm -hmm. as you were talking, I, I started, you know, putting them away because you were answering those questions. Uh, <laughs> Good. <laughs> And I guess this happened also to some uh, some people in our audience because we we still don't have questions. So I'm going to to ask you if besides the the presentation notes that you are going to make available, uh, do you have any text with the, at least the, the the first part of your presentation available? I I saw that you have a, an article uh, from uh, 2015, I think. Is that so, article about uh, the first part of your presentation? Is it uh, about what? And do you have a text about this? About the um, about creating the um, needs and yes. use cases. Yes, all this work that you've done. Yeah. And, uh, so yeah. a lot of that we're drawing up right now in the DLF AIG metadata working group. Um, some of that is derived from my own experience and some of that is derived from we actually did a call for use cases to figure out what people needed to do assessment and you know not surprisingly we got a lot of people who had really specific questions like I need to figure out all the instances of photographs where someone has a mustache and be able to assess that and I'm not even making that up like metadata is so specific to what people's needs um, but we got those use cases and tried to pull them together and put them into some sort of meaningful, like, uh, matrix was what we're aiming for. Um, that's all in the DLF AIG working group space. I am going to add the stuff I, um, I, my own additions uh, after this presentation and try to get that out. Uh, but there's nothing more formal than that right now at this point. And okay. I think we're aiming for it. <laughs> I think that would be very, very nice and uh, very helpful. I was going to ask you about, you know, about the examples, more examples for, for uh, people to see, but you already answered that as well now. <laughs> yeah. more examples there. So um, we have here, um, we have here some, uh, uh, I don't know if they are just uh, comments or uh, questions. We have a, a a question here from Stephanie Hu. Uh, she's saying that this is a uh, this is a, uh, a comment. She say thank you for you, this amazing webinar. So many things to check out. Thanks a lot. So yeah, I try to get all of the links in in the slides because there are a lot of resources that I've found over time. So feel free to keep using those slides for sure. Okay, we have a question here from Team Knight. He, he, he says also, great presentation, Christina, and uh, he asks, can you recommend some resource uh, regarding the RDF uh, mapping language? Oh, yeah. So, hey, Tim. Um, I believe it's just rml.io. I think that's where the specification is. Actually, I can check it now because I'm on the Internet. Yep, rml.io. That will take you to the RDF map mapping language specification, so you see the language. There's also a bunch of tools you can use to convert based off of that. Um, uh, they've got some of the tool software listed here, but you can go find them on GitHub as well um, and, and try to use them that way. Okay. So uh, I think this is all. Christina, do you have anything to add? Would you like to say something more? Anything more? Um, no, well, I just thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And I hope this was helpful and that people go and assess their metadata. <laughs> okay. So I want to thank you again for this very, very uh, interesting webinar and for all these, uh, uh, all these tools and all these uh, resources that uh, you showed that are available and uh, that you put here for us to, to check. And uh, well, I hope to see, to have uh, another webinar with you in the future about uh, uh, more concrete things about this, this, uh, these tools, maybe. Yeah, so, absolutely. Hi, Anna. <laughs> thank you. 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 Thank you
Thank you very much. Thank Hi. you very much. Anna, this is, this is Stefan. Before you log off, we have one more question, um, and it's from Julianne, and she asked, how useful is a metadata working group for performing metadata assessment? How useful is a metadata working group for performing metadata assessment? Um, I'm trying to figure out the context of questions coming in, but I'm going to just take a stab at it. Um, so the, the DLF AIG metadata working group on assessment uh, came about because uh, Corey Harper was doing all these cool visualizations and reportings from analyzing the DPLA metadata. Like he found some really cool thing like 25% of all of the text in all of the metadata from Digital Public Library of America metadata was from the rights field because the rights field were all over the place and all kinds of crazy. Um, that sparked a lot of interest in being like, well, how can I learn how to do that sort of assessment? And that spurred the DLF AIG to form that metadata working group. And we decided last year that we were not going to make it specific to any sort of uh, uh, metadata schema or ontology or model. It wouldn't be a DC or a Europeana or a MODS or a MARC or premise or EAD or whatever. Uh, it would be more about how can we get you the, the guidelines and the examples that exist the metrics um, and some of the starter um, information on the tools that exist for data work, not always specific to libraries, actually mostly not specific to libraries. And eventually, we're hoping this year, maybe towards the end, some of the statistical analysis, like the statistical background you need to understand what, what are statistically re relevant assessment results. So that was sort of the, the guiding result, or that's the guiding um, feature behind that group, and I find it useful. I mean, it is a little bit hard because we're at a height, like we're trying to stay outside of anything specific to a metadata um, schema. So it, it does, sometimes you wonder, like, well, does it matter if we're just sitting here saying assessment's important? Uh, I, the other option that maybe happens here is that we did have a lot of metadata assessment workshops and working meetings at my last job. And that was because I worked at a relatively big institution in which we didn't always know what metadata work was going on where. And so we wanted to start a conversation of building out a better ecosystem by first saying, can we perform assessment and figure out what metadata exists where and what state? And that's actually where a lot of those Python scripts that I use got you know, vastly expanded. I could do assessment of a solar index, do assessment of a DSpace instance, of any B-Press um, OAI feed, of Fedora 3, uh, of Fedora 4, all of this sort of stuff, Archivematica, well, Archive Space, and, you know, Archivematica pipeline off of it, to so start figuring out what was where. And that was really helpful, but it was also always, you know, always intended to be limited in scope and to try to make up for just, you know, years of, of not great work communication at a big institution. So at a small institution, maybe it's not useful. I, I, I don't know. I hope that um, at least starts to answer your question. Uh. I don't know if we have a, an answer from, uh, from uh, Julian. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it is very meta, so <laughs> I, I freely admit that. <laughs> Here, okay. So, Stefan, just before uh, muting me, just to tell the audience that uh, you may have uh, uh, I hope you have noticed that Christina talked about metadata application profiles. Next month, next month in May, we'll, we will have two webinars on developing metadata application profiles uh, with different approaches to developing metadata application profiles. So you are, you are of course, invited to join us uh, next month. And thank you to the thank you to Christina. Thank you to the audience for having. Uh, Hi, Anna. We have two more <laughs> questions. <laughs> They're coming in. <laughs> I didn't notice those questions. Thank you, Stefan. <laughs> or I with this. Okay. Oh, I, I see them falling out. Yes. From Kelly, Kelly Thompson. She's asking, 
Uh, do user studies have a place in metadata assessment? Sure, yeah. Um, so this is that area of like, can we do metadata assessment, say, uh, are these enhancements working? You know, what's the model look like? What's going on here? Get a better idea of maybe what's ending up in a solar index based off of catalog or something. And then I, I would love to have user studies be like, well, what part of the metadata is served up in a display application is being used how? And try to figure out what that link would be between our assessment of the metadata under the hood, so to speak, and what we end with that indexing process into in our display logic. Um, it's, it's something we have on the back burner for a different working group I'm in um, to start untangling what kind of questions we could start to answer with, with uh, experimentation or other. But yeah, absolutely. I could see where there would be some very fruitful links between those two. Okay, and now we have another question from Patricia Lampron. Uh, can you recommend resources to learn how to access metadata from services, like you mentioned, in this space, mm -hmm. app space, etc.? Yeah, so um, uh, the, the Python scripts that I mentioned, there's a harvester aspect that can pull from I think all of the services I mentioned earlier. And basically you harvest uh, the data set or a subset of the data set and then you run analysis on it. And that documentation is in the GitHub repo. It's, it's, there's a link in one of the slides to my metadata QA stuff. That's Python. Um, it works mostly. Katmandu, I mean, I wish I knew Perl better, um, but it scares me a little bit, I gotta admit. <laughs> But Katmandu is a really, really great project where it's a bunch of data um, management modules that is specifically written for and by libraries. So they've got modules to interact with like your Alma ILS API. They've got modules to interact with like your Elasticsearch or your solar indexing or to pull from a Z3950 endpoint. Um, they've got a, a lot there and their developers are really quick to respond with um, questions or, or requests for further documentation or something like that. Um, there are some other, uh, you know, depending on what kind of data particularly you're trying to pull, there's some more specific tools, you know, MarkEdit has a way to pull Z3950 and SRU, OpenRefine could pull from a couple different APIs. Um, if you wanted to ping me on Twitter or email me or something or leave a comment, I, I can, you know, with, with your particular um, uh, data repositories that you want to pull from, I, I'd love to, I, I could see what I could specifically recommend to what you need. But yeah, there, there's, there's a smattering out there. Okay, I don't think we have more questions now, Stefan, right? Yes, the, <laughs> that was the last of the questions. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, have a nice uh, day, a nice week, and I hope to meet you all uh, in uh, in my in the other two webinars. All right, thank you very much. I appreciate it, you guys. Thank you, Christina, and thank you, Anna. And for those still here, the recording of the webinar and the slides will be made available within 48 hours of today's live broadcast. So please keep an eye out in your inboxes for a follow-up email with the links. All righty, have a great day, everyone. Thanks, y'all. Bye. Bye-bye.